Hello everyone. This is Dr. Anvith from Department of Radio Diagnosis, MMCR Mysore. I would like to thank Indian Radiologist uh, for giving me this opportunity to present the role of magnetic resonance imaging in diagnosis and staging of patients with CR cervix. Coming to abstract, the background of this study was we wanted to evaluate the efficacy of MRI in assessment of important prognostic factors in carcinoma cervix like tumor size, involvement of parametrium, involvement of pelvic side wall, adjacent organs and nodal status and how it alters the plan, uh, plan of management and correlate MRI findings with uh, clinical figure staging and CSR. Materials and methods, this was a hospital based uh, cross sectional study conducted among uh, histopathologically proven cases of CSR cervix presented to the Department of Radio Diagnosis attached to MMCRI for 18 months from uh, January 2020 to June 2021. Coming to introduction, uh, CSR cervix is the most common gynecological cancers in uh, India and the second most common uh, gynecological cancer worldwide. It predominantly affects the multiparous women and is transmitted by HPV. MRI can tell accurately about the urinary bladder and rectal invasion by CSR cervix. Therefore, invasive procedures such as Cystoscopy and uh, zygmatoscopy can be avoided by using non-invasive diagnostic modalities like MRI. MRI is not only useful for preoperative staging but also it helps in identification of uh, recurrent uh, uh, residual tumors in treated patients. Radiological staging by MRI is better than clinical staging most of the time. Objectives were to evaluate the efficacy of MRI in assessment of important prognostic factors in CSR like tumor size, parametrium involvement, pelvic side wall involvement, adjacent organs and nodal status and how it alters the plan of management. And the other objective was to correlate the figure staging. Inclusion criteria, histopathologically proven uh, cases of CSR cervix refer to the department for MRI imaging. Exclusion criteria was the patients who are, uh, who are with cardiac pacemakers, new implants, clips within body and other uh, contraindications of MRI like water prolia, uh, those patients were excluded. Method of data collection was HPE prone cases that were referred to our department. Scan was done using 1.5 Tesla G Optima MR360 machine. Therefore, uh, the minimum after the calculation, the minimum sample came around to be 30. Due to the availability of uh, cases, the data uh, we took 50 patients who were biopsy prone CA cervix case. Statistical analysis categorical data were represented in the form of frequencies and uh, proportions. The chi square test was used as test of significance for qualitative data. Continuous data was uh, present, represented as mean and uh, standard deviations. An independent T test was uh, as a, used as a test of significance to identify the mean difference between two quantitative variables. The p-value uh, of less than 0 0.05 was considered statistically significant assuming all the rules of statistical tests. MS Excel SPSS version 22 were used to analyze the data. The results were uh, the total of 50 patients who were uh, biopsy prone CSRX were included in the study. Both newly diagnosed and uh, treated with uh, chemotherapy were included. Uh, figure stage was assigned both clinically and with MRI and the parameters were compared. The uh, two categories of patients were considered for the uh, study that is 18 newly diagnosed patients that forms a 36% of the study population and 32 treated cases which formed 64% of study population. In our study majority of the patients that is 90% of the study population were married, 10% were unmarried. The age group of patients in the study varied from 36 years to 73 years. In general majority of the patients belong to this age group of uh, 41 to 50 years that is 38% of the study population followed by 51 to 60 uh, years that is 32% of the population. 11 patients belong to more than 60 years of age, 4 patients belong to less than 40 years of age. Among the newly diagnosed uh, cases, uh, majority of them belong to the age more than 60 and the age group uh, 41 to 50 years. Uh, for, uh, but among the recurrent cases, the common age group was 41 to 50 years and 51 to 60 years. The most common represent, uh, presenting symptom were wide discharge according to the R study seen in uh, about 58% of the population followed by lower abdominal pain seen in 52% of the patients. In our study, the majority of the patients that is 29 uh, which formed 58% uh, of the study belong to postmenopausal group, 15% belong to premenopausal group, 6% had undergone total uh, subtotal hysterectomy. Radiotherapy was given to 32 patients totally and most of them that is uh, 10%, uh, 10 patients which formed 31% were referred for MRI during the follow up uh, for, uh, by more than 5 years. Uh, Hydroidra uh, HON is an indirect sign of uh, pelvic side wall invasion and was noted in 7 patients that is 14% of the cases. Out of these cases, uh, these 7 cases, 4 were new cases and 3 were recurrent cases after treatment. In our study, hydrometra was present in 20 cases that formed 40%. Among these, 10, per, 10 cases were newly diagnosed and uh, 10 patients were post-treatment cases. Among the 10 post-treatment cases, 9 had a demonstrable mass lesion on MRI. 
in our study with there were uh, 18 biopsy prone new cases clinically uh, mass was identified in 16 cases and was not suspected for two cases out of 16 cases with uh, clinical suspicion of mass mri showed presence of mass in 15 cases mri was not uh, able to detect one clinically suspected case thus mri showed the presence of a mass in 17 uh, cases including those two cases where there were no clinical suspicion the accuracy sensitivity positive predictive value thus came around 83 88 and 93% respectively according to the clinical figure staging the majority of the cases belong to stage 2b but according to mri figure staging the majority of the cases belong to stage 4a no cases were staged as 3c clinically however on mri uh, 3 3c cases uh, two 3c cases were detected in a study significantly uh, two cases were diagnosed as uh, stage 3b clinically who uh, and uh, on mri they were found to have stage uh, 4b on mri with bladder rectal invasion and distant metastasis one case was diagnosed as 3a uh, was found to be 4a on mri with bladder and rectal invasion one case which was diagnosed as 3b was found to be uh, 4a on mri with bladder and rectal invasion two cases of clinically staged 2 uh, uh, were found to have bladder invasion on mri and hence staged as 4a one case which was uh, clinically diagnosed as 1a showed bladder invasion on mri just upgrade up stage as 4a one case which was clinically diagnosed as 4a with cystoscopy showed bladder invasion Uh, rectal infiltration on sigma dose came out to be 4a on mri cystoscopy detected bladder invasion in only one case however on mri seven cases were di- diagnosed one patient had uh, both carcinoma of rectum and cervix apart from this uh, one more was identified with rectal infiltration uh, in the sigma endoscopy however mri showed three rare cases of rectal infiltration the most common hp type was squamous cell carcinoma which was present in 94.4% of the newly diagnosed cases and remaining 5.6% uh, constituted by adenosia in our study among the 18 newly diagnosed cases biopsy prone t2 weighted imaging uh, diffusion weighted imaging in contrast enhanced imaging showed lesions in 16 17 and 15 cases respectively one case did not show t2 hyper intensity or uh, contrast enhancement however the lesion was detected in dwa dwa mri was able to diagnose 94.4% of the cases t2 weighted imaging uh, detected uh, 16 cases which form 88% and contrast uh, images detected 15 cases that form 83.3% cases a combination of t2 weighting and uh, dwa detected a lesion in 16 cases a combination of t2 weighted and uh, contrast enhancement detected lesion in 15 Uh, cases mri staging correlated with clinical staging in only 22% uh, of new cases and uh, there was up staging in mri for approximately half of the uh, cases that is 55.5% and down staging for 22.2% uh, of cases in our study considering the 32 post treatment cases clinically mass was suspected in 24 patients that is 75% of cases in 8 cases there was uh, no clinical suspicion of but uh, mri showed the presence of mass in 18 patients out of 24 clinically suspected mass patients in 8 patients mass was not suspected clinically 25% which found 25% of cases but mri showed the presence of a mass in two cases among these eight cases the accuracy sensitivity specificity positive and the negative predictive values of mri in recurrent cases were 75 90 50 75 75 percent respectively squamous cell carcinoma was um, the most common histological type in uh, post treatment cases also that is in 30 percent adenosia was seen in 2 percent in our study altogether 20 patients showed lesion on mri the number of patients showing lesion on t2 weighted imaging diffusion weighted imaging and contrast studies were uh, 19 20 17 respectively three patients showed uh, t2 hyper intensity and uh, diffusion resection in the survey however in the contrast study there were no enhancement of tumors in these three cases in one case Imaging was done uh, two months after radiotherapy to assess the residual tumor, which was clinically suspected. MRI of the patient showed no obvious lesion on T2, uh, whereas diffusion uh, restriction was noted with early arterial phase enhancement in dynamic con- dynamic contrast study. Thus, a re- diagnosis of residual uh, tumor was made for the patient. In our study, the primary group of lymph nodes, that is, parametral obturator, external and internal nodes, were involved in four patients among the newly diagnosed. A secondary group of lymph node was involved in two patients. one patient showed involvement of both primary and secondary group of lymph nodes uh, in the post treatment cases the primary group of uh, lymph nodes were uh, involved in six patients and secondary group was involved in two patients one of the important prognostic indicators is uterine body involvement in patients with csrx of the total 50 cases uterine body involvement was noted in uh, 21 uh, patients which on 42% of the studies uh, more number of cases uh, 52.3% with stage 4 this was found to have uterine body involvement in our study four cases with stage 3c five st- uh, cases with stage 2b disease and only one case with stage 1b showed involvement of lower uterine body in our study among the 21 cases with uterine body involvement six showed primary lymph node metastasis and uh, two patients showed secondary lymph node metastasis the mean diameter of uh, 
the mean size of tumor is another important prognostic pattern the mean size of the tumor in patients with stage 1b 2a 2b was 2.02 cm 1.6 cm and 4.4 cm respectively the mean size of the tumor in patients with stage 3c 4a and 4b was 5.15 cm 5.85 cm and 4.5 cm respectively there was nodal involvement in if the Uh, mean size of the tumor crossed 4.4 cm and it was not seen in cases where mean size of the tumor was 3.4 cm or less from our study it was evident that post radiation complication were more common to develop after 3 years of radiotherapy the most common post radiotherapy changes were fatty replacement of bone marrow seen in 7 cases out of 32 uh, rt cases that formed 21.8% of the patients followed by proctitis and cystitis in new cases a combination of t2 weighting and dwa detected a lesion in ct cases a combination of t2 weighting and uh, contrast enhancement detected lesion in 15 cases in recurrent cases a combination of t2 weighted imaging dwa diagnosed 19 cases and a combination of t2 weighted imaging and uh, contrast studies diagnosed 16 cases for all the newly diagnosed stages uh, cases staged with figo system using clinical examination and mri the correlation was best for uh, stage 2b uh, disease and a higher uh, staging was given with mri to clinical stage 1 2 and 3 the accuracy sensitivity specificity and uh, positive pre- and negative predictive values of, of mri in new cases in our study were 83 88 and 0% uh, 93 and 0% respectively the accuracy sensitivity specificity positive and negative predictive value in mri in recurrent cases in our study were 75% 90% 50% 75% 75% and 75% respectively coming to discussion two categories of patients were considered for study 18 newly diagnosed and 32 treated cases the most common presenting symptoms was wide discharge seen in 38% followed by lower renal function among the newly diagnosed majority of them belong to age more than 60 years and between 41 to 50 years but among the recurrent cases the common age group is 41 to 80 and 51 to 80. these patients must have been diagnosed with disease at an early stage it is seen that uh, when the life expectancy is more possibility of recurrence of tumor is also more the most common histopathic type was scc both in newly diagnosed and recurrent cases in our study squamous cell uh, forming the mo- most uh, majority of the thing uh, uh, correlating with the study done by mtm ldsc nordin et al uh, on 12131 uh, cases of csrx in our study majority of the patient 38% belong to postmenopausal age group thus the disease is more prevalent among postmenopausal women in our study total uh, totally there were uh, 18 biopsy prone cases clinically mass was suspected in 16 cases and not suspected in two cases however mri showed the presence of mass in 17 cases including those cases where there were no suspicion of mass clinically but mri was not able to diagnose lesion in one case uh, which is which there was uh, clinical suspicion in a study done by nicolet v carignaniel borden fee of et al Uh, shows that stage 1a disease can be staged only at uh, histopathological analysis as tumor are, are not visible at mri it was also noted that accurate staging was lacking in cases who underwent hysterectomy for uh, early stage uh, disease and uh, for benign regions these patients who would be benefited with mri accuracy sensitivity positive predictive value of mri in newly diagnosed cases are 83 88 93% respectively the mri Uh, without contrast is reliable in assessing the parametrium and pelvic sidewall invasion t2 weighting images uh, and uh, diffusion weighted images give good information contrast material uh, contrast analysis t1 imaging has not proved to be more accurate than t2 weighted images in this setting there is agree this is in agreement with the study done by havigors h et al and uh, schleder uh, j et al mr scores better in delineating the invasion of adjacent organs in our study three cases were diagnosed as uh, stage 3 clinically and were found to be stage 4a with mr three cases were staged as two were actually found to have bladder invasion uh, the mr evaluation prevented unnecessary surgical intervention in these patients invasion of bladder and rectum can be ruled out with sufficient confidence with mr this was in accordance with study done by kim et al for all newly diagnosed cases staged with ficko system using clinical examination mr Uh, correlation was best for stage 2b this is and the higher staging was given with mri to clinical stage 3 mri staging correlated with clinical staging in 22% up staging was done in 55% and uh, down staging in 22% this was due to the reason that all these stage 3 disease patients diagnosed clinically had minimal bladder or rectal bladder invasion which was missed in clinic cases were misclassified so mri is advocated in all uh, advanced cases for proper staging and prognostication from our study it is evident that there is no definite role for contrast study in all the uh, cases which were newly evaluated there is no added advantage of contrast over plain study among 18 newly diagnosed cases t2w uh, t2 weighting images diffusion weighting images contrast analysis shows lesion 16 17 15 cases respectively dwmr alone was able to diagnose in 94% cases 
T2 waiting in 88 and contrast tenancy in 83 percent. In the new new cases, a combination of T2 waiting uh, images and uh, diffusion weighted images uh, detected lesion in 16 cases. A combination of T2 weighted images and contrast tenancy image detected in 15 cases. This combination of T2 and DWA is better than T2 in contrast uh, study. This was in accordance with study done by Havigost et al. and uh, Schiedler et al. who found that there is no added value of contrast in these cases. In our study, primary group of lymph nodes was uh, involved in 4 patients among the newly diagnosed. Secondary was involved in 2 patients. One patient uh, showed uh, involvement of both primary and secondary group lymph nodes. The, this is lower than uh, reported by Drescher et al. in his study. From our Study involving uh, post-treatment cases, it is clearly evident that there is no added value of routine contrast imaging for all post radiotherapy cases. It has an added value in cases of discrepancies between findings in T2 weighted imaging and uh, diffusion weighted imaging uh, where it serves as problem solving tool. In our study, although 20 patients showed uh, lesions on MRI, number of patients showing lesions on T2 images, DWA and contrast studies are 1920-17 respectively. Diffusion restriction was uh, able to diagnose recurrent lesions. In recurrent cases, combination of T2 weighted imaging and DW is able to diagnose 19 cases. Three patients who showed T2 hyperintensity and diffusion restriction didn't show enhancement of the tumor in cervix. A combination of T2 weighted imaging and contrast study was able to diagnose only 16 cases. Uh, Kinkel et al. in his work found that uh, in the first five months after radiotherapy, inflammatory changes may be responsible for early enhancement that may mimic uh, recurrence. Thus, there is no added value of uh, routine contrast imaging for all. Uh, post radiotherapy cases. In our study, MRI helped uh, to exclude the patients with no recurrence of tumor or uh, no residual mass in post treatment phase so that over treatment of these cases with radiotherapy could be avoided. It is it also aided in the diagnosis of recurrence in uh, two cases which were clinically undiagnosed so that appropriate treatment could be instituted in these cases. One of the patients had pure parameter nodal recurrence with no pelvic mass or uh, and MRI helped in diagnosis and staging it as 3C. The accuracy sensitivity specificity positive and negative predictive value uh, came around 75, 90, 50, 75, 75 respectively. In the post treatment cases, primary group of nodes was involved in 6 patients, secondary group in 2 patients. The most important diagnostic indicators are size of the tumor, uterine body involvement uh, and uh, nodal metastasis. More number of cases with uh, stage 4 uh, that is 11 patients were found to have uterine body involvement in our study. Thus uterine body involvement could be directly correlated to the advanced stage of the disease. Mean size of tumor is another important prognostic uh, factor as this could be correlated with the stage of disease and nodal involvement. It is also noted that there is nodal involvement if the main size of the tumor crosses 4.4 cm. In our study, hydrometer was present in 20%. Among these 10 were newly diagnosed, 10 were post treatment cases. Among the 10 post treatment cases, 9 had demonstrable mass lesion on MRI. One patient uh, hydrometer was due to cervical stenosis. From our study, it is evident that uh, post radiation complications are more common to develop after 2 to 3 years of radiotherapy which also corresponds with the average time of recurrence. Since most of the patients are referred during this time to look for recurrence of tumor, more, more complications are also diagnosed during this time. The most common posteriority changes are fatty replacement of bone marrow followed by proctitis and cystitis. This is the image representation. It is a 55 year old female, mass in cervix involving lower myometrium and uh, upper one third of vagina, hydrometer with thinning of myometrium, metastatic internal uh, iliac lymph nodes and obliteration of fat plane and rectum uh, in, and bladder infiltration. Stage 3. This is another case, known case of CSRX, post hysterectomy ill defined soft cystic, uh, solid cystic mass lesion involving vault encasing uh, right terminal ureter causing proximal ureteronephrosis uh, recurrent uh, lesion. Coming to conclusion, MRI is uh, better at delineating the invasion of adjacent organs. MRI can replace cystoscopy and zygmatoscopy in identifying blood and rectal invasion. A combination of T2 weighted imaging and diffusion weighted imaging would be the optimal technique for imaging both uh, new and uh, post treatment cases. T2 and uh, diffusion weighted images were the best sequences not only in uh, identifying recurrence but also excluding false positive in already treated patients. The contrast study provides no additional information in, uh, from our study. Uh, the most uh, important prognostic indicator was uterine body involvement in patients with CSR. Uterine body involvement could be directly correlated with the advanced stage of the disease. These are the references for the study. Thank you.